Hello. Hi, guys. How's everybody doing this morning? So we're starting, let's see, about two minutes late, which is good because I don't have a lot of news this morning. The few things that I did want to mention to you guys. Oh, is that muted? Yes. The few things that I did want to mention to you guys are that, um, let's see, I'm going to have some cool stuff from Renee Christine in a few weeks for you guys. It actually might be less than a few weeks. Um, just some free goodies that she and I have been talking about. So if you guys are on my email list, which is linked down below, and you're interested in learning about any of that, uh, I'll be sending out some announcements. I'll be covering it on live. I'll be posting it in the Facebook group. So just keep your eyes out for that if you're interested in getting some goodies for your business. And then the other announcement that I want to make is that I am still working on the, uh, the 2019 marketing calendars. I know I released some of those last year and everyone keeps asking if I'm going to do them for 2019, which I am. I'm just running a little behind on those because I've had a couple technical errors with them, but you can expect those in, I would say the next week or so. And then the last thing is our stream today is going to be, we're going to try to keep it to one hour because it's actually our daughter's seventh birthday. So we're super duper excited, but right when she gets off the bus, um, we want to be able to take her out and do some things and I've got some gifts that I need to wrap. So we've got about an hour after our stream ends for me to do that. So hope everybody's having an awesome day. Anthony's here with us. You want to say hi, Anthony? Hey everyone. Hey. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> awesome. And Anthony's gonna be answering some questions for you guys. We've got an overview of some of the new E-Rank tools. But in the meantime, we're going to just kind of welcome everybody on. And for those who are joining us for the very first time, we hang out for the first 10 minutes of every video just to give everyone a chance to log on. So if you're watching the replay, you can skip ahead about five minutes. And I usually put a timestamp under the video if you want to directly click that and zip over. Anthony, it actually sounds like do you have like a window or a fan going. It sounds like there's some uh, wind going through your mic. Uh, sorry about that. I had uh, two windows open and I think you were streaming in both of them. So hopefully it's better now. We're also um, up here in uh, northern northeast Ohio got uh, some some great wind gusts at the moment. So yeah, oh, yeah. we had some earlier too. Yeah, yeah, this morning was crazy. It, it's like it was warm all week and now it's freezing again. So yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we also have some neighbors that have got some wind chimes right outside our bedroom windows. <laughs> so, oh, man, that would drive me nuts. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're a bit uh, stir crazy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, we have, who do we have here? We have Alicia, is it Alicia? Alicia Jess and Shay and Rainy Craze. Rainy Craze says it was 79 degrees yesterday in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, yeah, it was 60 something here yesterday and it was snowing this morning. Yep. Did you get any snow, Anthony, this morning? Uh, just a little bit, but it's all melted now. I'm sure yeah. we're going to do it. Yeah, and for those who don't know, we, Anthony, moved to Ohio and we're also in Ohio. And for some reason, we haven't met yet. We, we're planning on doing that. Hopefully, maybe when it warms up. How about that? Yeah, I think uh, come springtime would be great. We yeah. definitely get down to uh, Columbus Way, and I know you're out that area, so um, we'll find a way to rendezvous and hang out. Oh, yeah, Columbus is great. And I know that we've got a couple. We did a Bitchcraft Fair last year. Hopefully, I don't get demonetized for saying a bad word. It's the name of the event, YouTube. Don't demonetize me. But they're going to be doing another event in uh, fall of 2019. So I know I'm going to be at that, but maybe I can persuade Anthony to come hang out at that. <laughs> We had a lot of alphas who came last year. It was pretty cool. Let's see. Monica says it's cold and really windy here in Scotland. Anthony, you just got back from a little trip, didn't you? You got it back from a trip to um, to Australia. How was the weather over there? Oh, it was lovely. Uh, anywhere between 100 and the, the Fahrenheit scale or uh, about 40 or 41 for me. So I was, <laughs> I was bathing in, <laughs> in warmth and sweat. <laughs> But I yeah. liked it. It was a lovely change, I must say. It's good aren't to see they? And uh, friends after so many years. Aren't they having like the hottest uh, summer? Oh, they seem to be uh, having uh, heat wave after heat wave and setting records every year at the moment. So it's it's a little worrying, you know. Um, 
but uh, hopefully there's some, some pleasant uh, weather coming uh, very soon there. Yeah, when, when we lived in uh, California, we lived close to Sacramento, and it would peak to, I think 116 was the highest that it ever got, yeah. but I, I heard that that's just kind of normal summers in Australia. Yeah, well, it depends which part you're from. We're in Sydney, or that's where my family live, and um, it's, you know, I can get to mid-low 40s, which is a bit north of 100. Ooh. Your, your, your connection's a little crackly today. I wouldn't want to be living in the outback because that is having a problem to Let's see, you're, you're, you're crackling quite a bit. You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, okay. and then you disappeared. Oh, now you're back. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got some gremlins here today. Yeah, if, if for everybody who's in the stream, if you guys, if you guys, I'm gonna prioritize our connection so we can, okay. at least on, if it's on our side, we'll get a little more stability. Yeah, we can, we can prioritize our connection so we can make sure that everything on our end is good. That way I can kind of, I can banter if we lose you at all. The weather's crazy, guys. You're gonna have to be a little patient with us. Ohio weather is super, super windy right now. So let's see. Um, uh, let's see. I've got you guys on the big TV today. Uh, Shay says I'll be at the event again. It was so much fun. Yeah, she came to our last event, which was super duper fun. All right. So, guys, we've got about one minute. Today, we're going to be covering some of the new tools added to E Rank. That's formerly Etsy Rank. Um, Anthony, you want to? Let every because I still get questions about the name change. You want to give everybody like the the confirmation that you're that you didn't get in trouble or anything weird like that. <laughs> oh, you know, I didn't get in trouble. Um, about three years ago, I reached out to, to Etsy and said, you know, is everything okay if I use this name? And they were cool about it. So, you know, they've been they've been great partners to have. Um, uh, I think late last year. Uh, they decided they want to have a little bit more control over their brand, which is fine by me. And so we, we had a, a very good and cordial conversation about it. So, uh, no, they didn't give me any uh, any grief at all. And uh, we rebranded. We had that in the plans anyway because, uh, well, I'll tell you that in another Q&A session maybe one day, but we've got uh, bigger plans. And um, so we decided, okay, let's do the rebrand. And uh, at the moment, we're in the final stages of, of getting our new site ready. Uh, and a new domain name as well. So it will be uh, uh, coming out very soon and I'll uh, let you know in hopefully a few weeks. Ooh, really? I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be so soon. Well, maybe maybe we'll have to plan like another Q&A when all that goes down, just so you could give everybody maybe like a tour of how yep. everything's gonna be. It, it'll be very similar to what there is today, but I've got a few little, you know, I always like to give a little a few little teasers away. So um, there'll be some nice new features in there as well. Um, that uh, I think people will like. So more about that in another. Uh, in a, we'll in a save that. Awesome, perfect. All right, guys. So it is noon oh one here in Ohio. Uh, noon oh one today. Anthony's going to be covering some of the new features for E Rank, formerly Etsy Rank. And I made a video for you guys that was posted on Wednesday that gives an overview of one of these changes. And it's my personal favorite, but I do want to point out really quickly because we always get comments about it. No, we are not affiliates. We're not getting paid to post these videos. Anthony is working money over to us. There's no like weird hidden sponsorships going on here. We genuinely use E Rank in our Etsy shop like on a daily basis. So I just I always have to throw out that disclaimer because there's always that one weirdo who's like, yeah, but. How much money is he giving you to say that? So, um, yeah, nada. Anthony can confirm that. <laughs> Perfect. So you feel like a real tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It's all about being unbiased, isn't it? You've got to give people good, honest advice, and that's what I, I like about working with you. And and same with you, because the, so many tools that you give away for free, and guys normal like your normal membership for e rank is free there's a pro membership but you can get on there like right now and not enter your credit card 
and start using a ton of tools that are available. So, yeah. don't, you know, th that is the one thing that sets E-Rank apart from a lot of other tools that are out there is there is that free membership. And then after you experience it a little bit and, you know, you can make that decision for yourself if the pro membership is, is right for you, you know, you have an opportunity to really test what's out there and see what he has in the free level. And then you can expect so much more when you decide to commit to that $10 a month membership. And I've got some links down below for you guys. Um, a couple people are commenting yeah, they're, on- they're talking about the, the wind noise going through the mic. Are you able to shut whatever windows you have open over there? It's, it's really loud. Okay, bear with me. I'll see what I can do here. It's, it's roaring, roaring winds. All right, guys, let's see. Um, there it went. Oh, no. Nope. Now, any difference? It's, it's much better. We're only getting momentary bursts of it now, so that's better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's uh, really shocking weather here. That's okay. All right. So, Anthony, you want to go ahead and talk about um, what what you released this week and the changes that E Rank Pro members can expect when they log in? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, really what uh, it boils down to is I wanted to give uh, users uh, more uh, tools and um, uh, features that help them learn more about their shop and do things quicker. And um, so I wanted to refresh some of the, the shop listing reports and uh, add a few little features that had been requested over the last maybe six months or so. So uh, that's what I did. Most of the stuff, I'd say about 90% of the stuff is, is free to everyone to use. And then there's the uh, changes section as well, which is which is super cool. That's a pro feature. Uh, and I'd love to show that off if, uh, if it's okay for me to uh, share my screen a minute. Absolutely. All right, shall I uh, start sharing? Sure. Yes. All right, let's do that then. With me? Oh, we see us. <laughs> Okay, let's pop into here. Perfect. So um, let me know if uh, my uh, connection gets a bit funky and I'll try my best to uh, slow down and wait for the screen to uh, to catch up. Everything looks good now. Everything's clear. Great, great. All right, okay. So um, the the changes are in this section here where there's a big, nice, honking, big, <laughs> big honking orange new button in there so uh, you don't miss it. It's the listing section. And there, the, the, the big thing that you will see as soon as you open it is there's a whole bunch of reports in here and half of these are old ones which i've just given a bit of a freshen up and and the other half are new ones um like i said they're they're tied to to feature requests that came in from people that you know basically hit the little feedback button down here and say you know hey anthony can you do something or other so you know i really yeah. am very keen to hear what people think about these because that sort of feedback helps me evolve the product and, and hopefully helps you uh, achieve more and learn more about your shop and, and save time uh, as we go. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll start going through the, the reports quickly and um, then maybe at the end we'll um, take some questions. Does that sound Absolutely. good? Absolutely. All right. Okay. So the first one is the active listings report. So no, no prize for guessing what that is. This is basically the active listings that you've got in your shop. And so my little demo shop here, I've got four listings in there. Um, but, you know, if you've got hundreds of listings you can actually now go in and, and select the section that you're interested in uh, you know say wedding bands or engagement rings or whatever it is and you click on the go button and it'll just remove anything that doesn't belong in that section and you can really start to drill down uh, into specific areas and that's really addressing a, a request that's been coming in actually for much longer uh, where people wanted to just focus on a section at a time in their shop so you'll be able to do that now um, the rest of this page should be fairly familiar. I haven't changed too much on there. You've still got the, the, the date that the listing was last updated. We've got a, a feature which we call suggestions and we show for each listing how many suggestions we have and you can click on that and then be taken to a page where you can actually see uh, the suggestions that we have. And these are all based on what we get from the Etsy um, ultimate guide to Etsy search. So all the best practices uh, that we can uh, identify and, and offer suggestions. We'll give those to you in there. So you can go in there and, and play around with those uh, as you like. We also have things like conversion rate and visibility score, which these are these are really neat if you're trying to figure out what listing to work on first. So you may want to start with listings that have got zero conversion rate, or you may want to start with listings that get very low visibility scores, because those ones tend to have 
um, the, 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 the worst performance and probably need the most attention. And you can sort of see what I've done here. I can just click on the headings and sort um, by each column like so. Um, the other thing I really like about all the reports in here is that you can actually go and click on these buttons and export it to Excel as well. So if you want to go and work offline with things and then come back later on, you can do that. Or if you just want to keep a snapshot for your own uh, references, you can do that as well. So little and little handy buttons to have there. The next one is the changes. And I'm actually going to skip that one for a second because I think I might leave that to last because that's, that's a really cool one. And that's the, the, the pro feature that I'll uh, talk about. And that's my favorite. That's, oh, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hold my, I'll contain my excitement for a second there. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the dates one. So this one, you know, you can get all this information in Etsy, but I think it's a little hard to get it all in one place uh, at one time. But a lot of people have asked me over the last year, is there a way where I can just get the, the date that the listing was created, when it was last updated, and when it expires? And, you know, there are various reasons for that. So I thought it's easy enough for me to do, so why not add it in? Uh, in this update. So that's exactly what I've done here. So you can see the listing uh, when it was originally created, updated, and when it expires. So you may want to look at listings that are expiring soon. So you can just go in here and sort accordingly and you can go, okay, well, I've got uh, one that's coming up in April that's expiring. I'm going to go and tweak that one now before it expires or whatever motivation you have for, for doing that. So it's a little neat, nice to have uh, report in there. The details one, this one, again, is pretty standard. It, it was in the old version as well, so I just carried some of these features over and just cleaned them up a little bit. It's got, it's similar to the active listings one, but it's got a few extra pieces of information in there. So you've got total views for each listing, the average daily views, the, the total number of hearts or favorites, and we've even got a percentage or a ratio of how many hearts you get per 100 views in there as well, just if you want to get a sense of which listings people may like more. Um, so it again is neat. Nothing new here from from the the previous version, but it's. I just wanted to share just to to um, let people know if you haven't visited the site before, that's what you can see in there. The grades one. Now this one's interesting because when we last chatted, uh, this wasn't in the uh, listing report, and it was um, something I had deliberately planned to remove. I didn't feel that grades gave people uh, good. Uh, actionable tasks to go and complete. I think that there were some people out there that looked at a grade and went, oh, this has got an A. I don't need to do anything else. But, you know, we all know once we've got some experience in there that it's, there's more to Etsy than, than, than the obvious. And there are things that I wish people would be looking at. And, you know, long story short, I got a lot of feedback when I took it away and, and people went, no, I really need it. It helps me guide what I want to do next. So I brought it back. Um, so. You know, apologies to anyone that freaked out about that or was missing it. Um, but thanks to everyone that used the feedback button because you know what? You told me what you thought. I got some excellent feedback in there, some great suggestions on what we could do as an alternative. And so it's back. And now I've got some of those ideas. And this page is actually going to be uh, changing and improving over the coming weeks as well, thanks to your feedback. So that was an unexpected uh, bonus from taking something away temporarily. And, you know, I just like to listen and, and make sure that's what's happy as well. Um, this page, at the moment, it's similar to um, uh, a couple of other pages in there. So you'll see the grade, uh, the, the number of suggestions that we have, which you may want to consider that could help improving uh, the visibility or the exposure that your listing has to potential buyers and the conversion rates and the visibility scores. So I'm going to be putting some more things in there um, just to help uh, people um, find other things that they could possibly do. If they're really struggling, I'm going to see what I can do in here, in this page here, to give people a better sense of now what? You know, what can I do next? What else can I do to, to help out? Um, so that's that one there. The next one is the tag filter. This one's really neat. Um, it, what it does, hopefully I can explain this briefly and, and accurate and easily to understand. It allows you to filter your listings so that it only shows um, those listings that have tags containing whatever word you put into the uh, into the box here. So if I type in thin, for example, you'll see all the other listings disappear and you'll be left with thin, as a thin gold ring. And the beauty of this is that a lot of people out there were telling me, Christmas is over, now I want to go in and update my 
listings for Valentine's Day or Mother's Day, how can I quickly tell which listings have got Christmas in the tags? And you know, they weren't too concerned about the titles, they just wanted to know those tags. So this is what that report does. You can just go in there, put in the you know a word or two. Um, so I can put in like I said, thin, or I can put in gold. Engagement. You can see what it's done is it's removed all those other listings in there. From there, you can go and export again to Excel or PDF or CSV file and download that file and do what you need to do with it and update those listings accordingly. Okay. Audio is getting a little choppy. We can still understand you. It just you, you, it's kind of cutting out just a little bit. So I just wanted to give you a heads up to. Oh boy. <laughs> got to love live presentations, haven't you? Oh, I know it. it. Well, that's the thing. Live is completely unpredictable, guys. So it, uh, it, it could be weather. It could be just connection issues. But we'll go ahead. We'll keep moving. OK. I'll, uh, I'll try and lift one leg and, and hope and see if uh, that helps <laughs> to keep the connection going. OK. And then actually, you know what? We do have a question. Um, we do have a question about the tracking button that I'll go ahead and give it to you now so it doesn't get shot up the page. Yep. Michael wants to know if I click the tracking button at 12 p.m., it will record the data for that listing every day at 12 p.m. I can't guarantee that. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But uh, essentially, um, the system will, um, it'll take time for the system to. Um, record each listing each day and depending on how fast Etsy is performing that day and the internet it may be around about the same time every day but uh, I would assume that it's going to be random and probably somewhere between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. or something like that so you're not going to get a perfect clean 24 hours right at midnight okay perfect Oop. sorry about that <laughs> Telemarketers, I swear. Telemarketers. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, but I think I think that that well, Michael, we'll we'll be getting more into the uh, the changes tab last because that's kind of that's the big shebang. Yep. Perfect. Okay, I'll keep going through. Uh, these okay. are so the next three uh, tabs here: the missing tags, missing images, and missing attributes. Um, these are very similar to what we had before. So these are listings that essentially don't use all 13 tags or don't have uh, all 10 images in there or they don't have attributes. And these are all things that Etsy have told us can help either get your listing exposed to more people or help improve your conversion rates or help people discover your listings when they're looking for something very, very specific. So these are great little things to have. You can go in there. Hopefully you don't see any issues at all. Um, but if you do see um, uh, listings in here, you know that there is a problem. So you can go and uh, click on the edit on Etsy button. That'll take you over to Etsy where you can go and modify that listing um, and add missing images or missing tags and hopefully get that listing in front of more people. So that's what those do. Uh, same with missing attributes. It just checks to see if your listings have all the necessary attributes. So if it's jewelry, it could be the ring size or the gauge of the wire or things like that. So. Um, if they're missing, then you get it'll get flagged here and, and help you discover those missed opportunities. Second last one is another new report for everyone, which is one word tags. So if anyone's gone through the ultimate guide to Etsy search, you'll see that they're now encouraging people to use multi-word uh, tags. So in the you know in the good old days, we may have just put ring in there, and it might have been perfectly satisfying satisfactory. Etsy are telling us instead of using things like ring, do things like silver ring or silver opal ring. We'll try and get a long tail keyword in there. So what we do here is we just highlight those listings that have got those one word tags in there because they're, they're, it's an easy opportunity for you to take that listing, add an extra word into the tag. Um, so in the example here where if, if you can see where my mouse is, I've got ring in there. It's a nice short word. I can put a couple of words in there next to it like silver ring or silver opal ring. Suddenly it starts to look like a long tail search term. It's still got ring in there, so you're not going to lose any benefit uh, from changing from ring to silver ring. It's going to be a, a great little thing to help you add long tail keywords and, and optimize your listing just that little bit more. And of course, you'll get other ones where 
the word may be a little bit longer, uh, engagement, uh, personalized, and things like that, that may be a little bit harder to put multiple words together into those tags. You can ignore those, but this is really just to help you spot possible uh, other possible opportunities to, to improve your listings and get greater exposure for um, uh, to, to buyers on Etsy. And the last one is the estimated inventory value or a breakdown of um, the inventory value of your shop. So if anyone's logged into Etsy, uh, E-Rank and, and looked at their dashboard and you've gone, how is it possible that I have got $50,000 worth of inventory in my Etsy shop? Well, you can go into this inventory report now and quickly see where um, that $50,000 comes from or whatever it is in there. And oftentimes you'll see something like this. You'll see that there's five of this item available at $22, which is a total of $110. I didn't go through there and go, ah, oh, okay, now it starts to make sense. Occasionally I've seen people where they put a quantity available of 999, and that's obviously gonna blow out your inventory value. You probably don't have that all in stock, um, but you have an endless supply of things. Maybe it's a digital product. So there'll be a few anomalies in there, but I think that uh, uh, this helps to explain what that inventory value was like. Um, and I'm sure there are other users, uh, use cases, um, which people will find uh, useful for the inventory. Okay, so that's it. Shell, I move over to the changes. Are we are we moving are we moving on to the changes? Uh, Elaine says I went pro this week. It's so amazing. I should have done it earlier. This new feature rocks. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All okay. right. All right, let's do the changes, huh? Yes. All right. So, what are changes? Um, oh. You're only tracking one, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tracking one right now. So I'll go back to here. So if you've got a bunch of listings in here and um, you know you, you listen to something that I say or something that Starla says or you read something on Etsy forum or wherever and you go, huh, I want to change my listing and see what that does. Well, now we give you the ability to track those changes that you make. So if you are about to go and uh, modify a listing, say, for example, I want to go and change or make some changes to the, this listing. With E-Rank, if you're a pro member, you can now go in there, click on the track changes button. What that will do is it'll immediately take a snapshot of what that listing looks like right now. So you can see in here, we'll take a snapshot of the title, the tags, the price, how many you've got available, the total number of views and favorites that that listing has. And what we'll do from that point onwards is roughly every 24 hours, we will take another snapshot. And so if I go to a listing here, and I just click on the show changes button, you'll see this is a listing that I started uh, tracking a few days ago. And you'll see that initially it had uh, five in, in, in stock. There were, there were 208 views. And you can see that the next day at roughly the same time, it's come through and it's detected a couple of views. So now it's 210. It'll highlight in green that there have been two views. And you'll see that two people unfavorited that product. How dare they, right? But <laughs> <laughs> this is the power of what you can you can see in there. And you know, when you created the the video, your your example that was much more interesting. You, you had a product which had been you started tracking, and it was dead flat. Nothing was happening. You made some changes, uh, and you can sort of see here what I've got here. So I, I um, uh, between this snapshot and the most recent one, I removed fancy from the title and I added a couple of words in the. Uh, in the title here and, and you can see those highlighted in green and I removed fancy from the tags as well. Now my data is fictitious here but you can see here that the quantity uh, has actually dropped. Now to me that's probably or to most people out there if you see that that's probably great news that is most likely a sale that's happened and someone's purchased that item. You could have also adjusted the inventory level or the quantity that's available um, but that's the power here. So if you can imagine if you're tracking a listing for 30 days or 60 days, you know, there's no limit. We will track it as long as you want us to track it. You can go back in time and you can see periods when you were getting regular views. So one of the real benefits that I wanted to highlight here was if you go and make a change based on what, you know, someone tells you is really good. Maybe there's something on the forums you want to try out. If that change tanks your listing, if, if that change just kills the listing, I guess no more views. What you can do is you can go back over time and go, what were my tags back then? Oh, okay, well, I was getting pretty good views around about this time. 
you can then go and copy and paste your tags, put them back in and undo those changes that may have caused some harm to that listing. And hopefully Etsy picks that up and then voila, you start getting regular views again and hopefully some sales and things like that. So that's a, 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 a use case scenario that I was, I was very excited about. I, I hear people all the time, they get some, you know, some dodgy advice from someone or they misinterpret something that Etsy says and they go and make some changes and then now what do I do? <laughs> I've killed all my listings. If you start tracking your listings, you can go in there and actually see what's being done, see whether uh, a certain tactic is working for you. And you know it, it's really hard to articulate or, or demonstrate that when I've only got three snapshots in here. But if you can imagine 30 days or 60 days worth of data, you can start to get a really good sense of what's working and what's not. And Anthony, I'm going to go ahead and ask a question that I know people have, and obviously, you know, we we kind of have an idea of the answer of this. But if someone's tracking a listing and they notice that their views tank, like say that they they change their keywords and they give it two two days, we'll say, yep. and they see that their maybe their views and favorites like don't increase at all, is that an indication that they should immediately go in and put everything back, or do you think that they should give it a test period? you know oh, yeah, to really let the changes set in that's too soon so um i would allow well depends on whether it's tanking right if, if it just stops then you've probably removed some good keywords from your title or your tags so in that case you probably want to pop into your uh, etsy search analytics or if you've got google analytics installed for your shop you can go into there and have a look at what search terms people were entering and I would go in there and go, oh, I see what I've accidentally removed. Put those back in. So if, it, if, it, if you stop getting views, that's what I would do. Try and figure out what those good keywords were that you had in there before, put them back in, and then maybe change it to something else. And then what if they, what if everything goes down? Like what if you notice, what if, what if things are actually decreasing? Well, and what, what would you do there? Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the only things that can really decrease are the number of favorites. Um, right. That's probably outside of your control. Um, if um, if you make some changes and you don't see any any material impact, um, say for example, you're getting you know regularly one view every day or one view every two days, and you make some changes and you're still getting one view every two days or something like that. Yeah, sounds to me you haven't ruined anything, but it also means that Etsy probably need a little bit more time to gauge how people are engaging with that listing. And once they've done that, then you may start to see this this uplift in in, in views. So I've heard after a change, you may need to wait any anywhere from two to four weeks. Some people have said six weeks, depending on the time of year. So if you know you don't see any material change, give it a few weeks. If you see a sudden drop. In that situation, I would definitely go and have a look. Have a look at your search analytics or Google Analytics and see if you can figure out what keywords were driving people to that listing and get, make sure that they're still in there. And and when we make edits, we should edit all of our listings all at the same time, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I know that drives you crazy. I had to mess with you there. <laughs> yeah, you, you know the drill, and hopefully everyone that, that that's watching knows that as well really I, I'm a big fan of you know baby steps you know take very you know take care you know especially if it's a listing that sells regularly you know I'd, I'd be horrified if people go and change their best-selling item because they you know heard a great theory and then suddenly their sales stop I would always start and take a bottom-up approach so work on that listing that has got the fewest views or you know gets one view a month or something like that I'd start with those and just modify a few and, and try and master you know SEO as best as you can on those listings experiment with those first and then gradually start to work your way up that list and into more um, uh, listings that are getting more views and, and, and then eventually into those ones that are getting regular sales but I'd leave those best sellers until last you know if it ain't broke don't fix it sort of thing and and how many listings at a time can they track at the moment um, there's a limit of 20 in there. It's not very many, I know, um, but I wanted to do a couple of things here. First of all, I wanted to make sure that the service is running smoothly, that 
you know, the system doesn't suddenly get bogged down because everyone's starting to track their entire shop. And, you know, we've got members which have got 4,000 or more listings in their shop. I don't want it, the service to come to a grinding halt. Um, so we started with 20, and it's a little clunky at the moment. You've got to click on the button and then go back. I realize that is not an ideal thing, um, but I wanted to figure out how people are using it, get some feedback from users. So if you go in there and you go, hmm, this isn't quite working for me. Hey, Anthony, I've got a suggestion. You know, I'm, I'm looking for that sort of feedback. So I'll be looking at how people engage with it and monitoring the servers to make sure that they're running smoothly. And then I'll start to increase that as well. So it'll, it'll, it'll definitely be going up. You'll be able to track 20 right now, and that'll go up uh, in due course as soon as I feel comfortable that uh, things aren't gonna break down. And, and, you know, awesome. And I want to confirm, guys, that when you click that feedback button, that doesn't go to like some weird tech support, you know, service in India. That that goes to Anthony. He will be reading your feedback. So if you see something that oh, yeah. doesn't seem right to you, or if you have a suggestion, or he changes something, and you know, and it's not really working for you, or you you have an idea that might make it better, use that feedback button and give him give him your ideas because he's gonna take those ideas and really use them to shape the platform that you guys want. So never, never, you know, ignore that feedback button if you have an idea that you want to share with him. Yeah, please do. I mean, that every time a feed, piece of feedback comes in, my phone will buzz, my, you know, inbox will make a noise and uh, I'll know that, that something's, something's going on or someone's got a concern or someone's got a question. So yeah, please use it. I check it all the time. And as to people, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of people that can vouch for, for this one here. Um, like I said, I removed grades the other day, and you can imagine I got a lot of feedback about that. Uh, there were a lot of people that really looked to that, the grading system, as their, their guide. You know, they, they looked at something that had a C or a D or an E grade, and they knew that there was something wrong with that listing that needed fixing. So, you know, it, it gave me enough information to go, all right, people rely on this. It's important. So feedback really helps, please. Uh, let me know what you're what you're thinking. Click on that feedback button. Type in a message. Make my phone buzz. <laughs> <laughs> drive them, drive them crazy. Send them a hundred of them. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. No, it's uh, you know, Starla. To be brutally honest, 999 out of a, out of a thousand are, are great pieces of information that just help me in a little way, or in sometimes in big ways, to to make the service better for people. So you know, I can't emphasize enough. Get in there. Hit feedback. You may think it's trivial. But for me, I'll make a note of it. If it's a feature request, I can put that in my little list there. And if multiple people have got the same feature request, I get, I better start doing this, you know what I mean? So, right, and then you've also got the Facebook group. I know a lot of people don't even realize that E-Rank has a Facebook group and it's just called E-Rank Group, right? Uh, it is, yep. So just look for E-Rank, um, or maybe we can share a, a link at the end. Yeah, I, you know what, I'll actually, after this video ends, I will put it in to the video description. But if you guys go to Facebook and you just search E-Rank uh, Group, because there is a page to the, I know you don't use the page as much anymore now that you have the group going. Um, just type in E-Rank Group and that should pop up and request to join. And there's a lot of commotion in there. But if you want a more SEO focused group, that's a good place to go. <laughs> I was gonna say I'll go ahead and switch us. I'll switch us back. Um, in the screen. No. All right. So, guys, uh, if you have any questions for Anthony, you can go ahead and start getting those into the chat. Um, Anthony, are is there anything else that you wanted to share with them while they're typing that in, or? No, look, that, that was the, the big thing I wanted to share with everyone, those new reports and the, the old ones that have got polished off a little bit better. Um, feel free to poke around and, and play with it. I know a lot of people have started using the, the, the change tracking feature. So if uh, you're, you've got a day or two's worth of data in there and you notice something that's interesting or otherwise you'd want to share with me, please do, you know, send me some, some feedback. I'd be very keen to hear what uh, people think and, and you know, I'd say get in there, start tracking those 20 listings right now, even if you're not ready to modify them today, because you're going to get some really interesting stuff in there. You'll see a little bit of historical views and favorites each day. You'll, you may even see the, the, the quantity available drop by one or two if you get a couple of uh, sales. So get in there, start tracking right now. If you're planning to make changes to those listings, hit that track button. 
um, and then sit back and watch it for a few weeks and see what impact those changes have. Awesome. All right. Well, Anthony, if you want to um, uh, stop sharing your screen, it looks like we've already got a few comments. Thanks, Nate. Nate said bear with the audio. Yeah, audio isn't great today. Um, let's see. Sophie says, I want to ask, I've changed listings by adding tags that get or that get good amount of searches. Not too much competition, but I still have very low views. Why do views not go up? I've got some ideas for that, but I'm going to let Anthony answer. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think for views, there, there are a couple of reasons that I've seen over the years. Uh, first, and the most obvious one to me is the main image quality. So if you've got an image and you've just taken it with your cell phone and you don't have good lighting or something like that, or it's a bit uninspiring, people are just gonna skip over that. And, and to me, poor images are the arch enemy of good SEO. You can get all the great keywords in there, price it perfectly, but if you've got a crappy picture in there, you're undoing all that goodness. You know, So if you uh, have the opportunity to do so, Maybe if you do jewelry, you can uh, get a light box and get some good lighting and you know a decent sort of camera. Um, even with a light box and, and good lighting, you can take some great pictures. Uh, things like that, focus on getting that main image. That would be the, the first thing I'd be looking at. There's a couple of other things in there as well. Maybe you're not pricing it uh, appropriately or you have a product that is, you know, it, it may be very expensive because it's you know high quality or whatever it is. So you're not going to get a lot of views anyway. But most, right. most likely it's the image quality. Yeah, and Sophie Sophie says my image is good, but I mean, that's kind of subjective. It's really hard to, I, and I'm not saying that you have bad images because I'm not looking at them, but there are a few other factors yep. that might be tying in. You could be using good SEO for keywords that are being searched, but maybe people who are searching those keywords aren't exactly searching the type of product that you're selling. Maybe you have some niche product that doesn't even fit the keywords that you're currently using. So maybe you're getting found for yellow uh, dangle earrings, when in reality, it would be better for you to use keywords that are more like, you know, yellow geometric triangle earrings. There's, there's a million ways that you could play with that. Um, but really, I think that an outside perspective might be a good idea in this case, since it's really hard to look at our own listings and reflect. So my advice would be to jump down in the Handmade Alpha Facebook community. You guys can post listings in that community as long as you're not advertising. If you guys need feedback, yes, you can post a listing or a shop link as long as you are actually using that. You know, I, I can tell the difference if you're advertising and if you are, you know, just asking for honest feedback. So throw that link in there. Let people know what your problem is and ask for that that you know constructive criticism. And please, I, I'm going to throw this out there too. We have a lot of alphas who do that, and then our alphas co go in and try to help them and give them constructive criticism. But then the original poster gets super duper offended that they receive that criticism. You have to have you know, a strong backbone in the business industry. So make sure that you're not taking offense when people give you that criticism. Consider every single piece of criticism to be constructive and understand that the alphas in our community, our community, most of them are very seasoned and a lot of them know exactly what they're talking about and the changes that they recommend are often, you know, really important things that you should be taking note of. So there's my little rant for the day. Um, Vanessa. Uh, what do you think about making a duplicate listing of a former bestseller and adjusting the duplicate? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, when you make a duplicate, it doesn't really carry over any of the metadata with it. It's just the text that comes along with it. So it doesn't maintain any of the history of the listing. The sales, the, the yeah. reviews. It does. So, I mean, if the text is good, that's fine. But right. You're still, you, you might be, if, uh, you're uh, basically, I think she's asking if she were to recycle for tabs and titles, like copy the listing and recycle the tags and titles. Uh, but then just kind of just very, you know, maybe it's just a different color handbag or something. What what would be the the difference there? Um, so Mark's right. No, none of the data none of the data is carried over to the new listing. So it's handy from a time saving perspective. Uh, beyond that, um, there's no benefit that's passed on to that new listing at all. The only thing I can think of from a positive side is that if you found a good niche and you want to make a slight variation, um, then that's a that's a very neat little time-saving uh, trick to uh, to apply. 
Yeah. And I, I mean, I've done that before too, where I'll have, I'll have two almost identical dragon keys and I know what keyword that I frequently use. So I'll copy that over. But the one, the, the primary one that I copied from is the one that already has that traction. You're gaining a history by having those listings that are selling over and over again. That's why I tell you guys that, yeah, one of a kind products, they can do okay on Etsy with a lot of external advertising, but typically you want to have a listing that sells over and over again so it gains traction it has a history and etsy knows wow this listing is selling it's selling really well the more that it sells the more you know money we get we want to take this product and push it to the top so it's really good to start building a history with a singular listing and try to not you know recreate listings every single time that you want to list the exact same product over and over again um let's see kim I have a product that I have redesigned. The current listing I have is about a year old, has a few favorites and one sale. Do you think it would be better to update the current listing or make a new listing, with, but it's only got one sale? Wow, that's a great one. I get that a lot. Uh, actually, I think we may have even discussed that a few times in, in the past. And You know, I, I think it's six one, half a dozen another. Um, you know, you can you know, kill it and create a new one exactly like it, or you can try and revamp it. Um, I would say, just keep in mind that if that's a seasonal item, say it's, I don't know, Valentine's Day, maybe it only sells one time of the year, right? Uh, if it's an evergreen thing, like a, um, like a birthday gift that could be 365 days a year, then there's probably something wrong there. And I'd probably kill that listing and create a new one. Because you've got to keep in mind that Etsy have told us that they look at engagement rates and if something um, and conversion rates. So if, if, if a listing is shown multiple times and no one clicks on it, it doesn't have a really good engagement rate. Etsy's going to go something not right, quite right with this one. If it has 200 views and, and only sells once, then they're going to look at that and go, well, that conversion rate's a little bit weak. Etsy and buyers theoretically will be much happier if they if Etsy promoted a listing that had a better conversion rate. So if you've got something that's been around for a long time, had no sales, had next to no views, that listing theoretically has been, you know, almost blacklisted by Etsy, it's probably time to put that one to bed and create a clone of that or a brand new one from scratch and then try um, uh, that approach. And I've had many people that come in and uh, tell me, give me bits of feedback and say, you know what, Anthony, did that two days later, bang, it sold. You know, that's, that's great. Doesn't always happen though, you know. But I think that's um, in situations like that where it's been so long since it's sold, I'd probably um, kill that listing and start a new one. Yeah, and not only that, but starting that new listing, it's going to start with a neutral score as opposed to possibly a negative score in the eyes of Etsy when it's you know when Etsy sees there's low conversion rates and maybe it's got a bunch of views but it's not selling and Etsy sees that that people are clicking on it and then clicking right back off. It's better to start with that neutral score than start you know in the red with it. So, um, and, you know, I, if memory serves me right, uh, well, I know the last time I chatted to Etsy, they do give new listings a slight brief boost, boost as well. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's a little bit of benefit there for sure. That doesn't mean like every time your products don't sell, delete all your listings and then re-upload them because they get a boost. That's not a good idea either, but <laughs> just make sure that you're mindful. And small experiments, please. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. I think that Etsy would be able to detect something suspicious like that uh, taking place and that might land you in oh, you know, Etsy and you know I've had to work with search engines before where they have people that specialize in, in spotting all these sort of shenanigans that go on so don't <laughs> go out there and do something extreme because they'll catch you don't yeah. poke the bear yeah don't do it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Robin, here's a here's a good uh, question. Robin wants to know if there's a way to grade image quality for th their thumbnails. <laughs> yeah, I've got an algorithm for that. <laughs> no, <laughs> there is not. Yeah, um, that makes human eyes. You know, there are uh, companies out there, uh, and I'm talking. Going to give you a little bit of search engine insight out there. Uh, uh, there are companies that search engines like Google and Bing have used where they actually get human judges to look at search results and go, this one's good, this one's not so good. Um, 
Debbie uh, Flaherty, who's, who's the moderator on our group, uh, gave exactly. me a She's in the comments right now. Sorry? She's in the comments right yeah, now. Yeah, she's probably lurking around, making notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, she gave me a great idea last year, which uh, I'm going to experiment with, <clears throat> and um, it may it won't be able to grade you, your, your images, but we may be able to give you a, a facility which allows you to put it out there and have people anonymously grade your, your images. So, Like um, critiques. Exactly like critiques, you know. So I'll get back to you on that one, Starla, because I think it's a, it's a great idea that Debbie had there, and I think that it may help. It'll t hopefully take away a little bit of the subjectivity. Um, and, you know, like uh, the, the thing I would never do is ask a friend or family, what do you think of this image? Because, you know, it, it, they're not going to give you what you need to hear. They're going to give you something to make watered down. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you need to find that stranger and that anonymized uh, opinion there. So, don't have yeah. anything. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. Right. And, guys, I mean, for one, if you're not familiar, if you go into the playlist section on my channel, I have a playlist called my Eye Picky Training Series, which will teach you how to edit your photos if you don't have money for Photoshop or if you're unfamiliar with the program and you just want to do it quick and easy with something free. I have an entire training series that teaches you how to do that. Not only that, but if you want those critiques, we have the Handmade Alpha Facebook community linked down below. In the meantime, while Anthony's working on this, you know, this thing, obviously there's no like estimated time frame for when that's going to be done. So in the meantime, if you want to throw a picture in the group and say, hey, you know, how can I improve this? Or what do you guys think of this? Or how can I make this image better? And just make sure that when you post pictures like that, you're, you're asking for specific direction so people know exactly what you're looking for rather than saying, hey, do you guys like this? Say, hey, what could I do to make this better? What what do you see here that could use improvements? Make sure that you know you give some hooks for people to latch onto so they know what it is that you're asking and what you're looking for. But um, okay, Sonora K. So a listing can be cloned and will be considered a new listing, basically. Yes. Like when you copy them, yeah. yeah. It's just it's just a copy. It's a duplicate. You're not taking any of the data. It's and literally just the text that you put in with your past listing and nothing more. Right. Um, let's see. Gallery gift. Uh, before Christmas and before I learned too much about Etsy, I edited the whole shop. We had a terrible Christmas and it still hasn't picked up. Have I broken it or can it be fixed? Uh-oh. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one. I, it, I feel for people that, that do that. You know, you, you, you have the best intentions there to, to make things great. Um, and it goes back to this is the reason why I don't encourage people to go and change their entire shop. You know, experiment a little bit, try listings that if they, if you break those listings, you're not going to lose revenue and things like that. Um, you know, I don't think all is lost. Those listings still have some uh, historical reputation that's there. If you can undo some of those changes, if you remember some of the tags um, or the titles that were being used, then try and restore some of them back to the way that they were. If you're an E-Rank Pro member, there's a best sellers feature and it's got sales uh, history in there. And that will show you what those listings look like each time they sold in the past. Uh, and that's a very neat feature that can help people in that situation. So, um, you know, if you uh, if you need a bit of help with that, um, feel free to send me uh, a little bit of feedback and uh, I can help you maybe unravel a few of those mistakes I've made with me. Awesome, and let's see. Um... Ashley commented a minute ago about family giving feedback. She said family will tell you what they think you want to hear, and if they tell you something harsh, you get upset at them. It's a lose lose. <laughs> That's true. Um, let's see. Cindy asks, "What if you have a listing with killer sales? The original is discontinued because the supplies are unavailable. Can you take that listing and replace it?" with a new item so basically taking the history of that listing and just putting in the new photos and changing it so you're using the same listing yeah that's an interesting one i don't know etsy's policy on this but that sounds a little bit like a bait and switch to me so be really careful there i think it's a clever idea um but if you were selling a banana before and now you're selling an apple and you're trying to appreciate all the goodness from that banana keywords or whatever it is in the past 
people are going to be disappointed. So be very, very careful there um, and, and maybe pop in and check um, the Etsy um, terms of use just to make sure that that's allowed. I would be very, very wary about making substantial changes to an old listing. If it's remarkably similar, maybe it's a, a very subtle little change. Get away with it. Yeah, and uh, you know what? At user experience here, as an, uh, someone who frequently shops on Etsy, something I really hate is when I go into my favorites because I have I have got several thousand favorites just from my own personal use. I'll pop in there and I will see an item from a shop that I have followed, but the item itself I did not favorite, and that tells me that they did exactly that. They took something that I favorited. And they don't sell it anymore but rather than just getting rid of that listing and showing it because it will display as sold in favorites instead of doing that i've got some item that i never favorited and i'm looking at it and usually it's something i don't even like i don't want it in my favorites and that leaves a bad taste in my mouth for the entire shop so you have to think about the people who are favoriting these items when they go and you completely switched it out for something else, it's gonna be really confusing and it might lead them to, you know, have that bad taste and not want to buy it from you at all. Sure. So I think that that's one more thing there, Starla. Um, and that is that if you make uh, if you swap something out, now if that new item uh, tanks, that kills the conversion rate for that listing. So if you suddenly if your supplier suddenly could help you stock up again but you've killed that listing you may have un undone good things in there as well so again i'd be very wary about that i'd, I'd be yeah just be very careful with that don't kill it guys don't kill it sorry i stole his red bull cynthia she didn't want a red bull and now she's drank half my red bull sorry <laughs> cynthia said oh starly favorites that's a great point starly i'm assuming that was an autocorrect but if not i think i have a new nickname um all right guys do you have any last minute questions for anthony get those last minute questions in the comments because we've got about 10 minutes left no cynthia you're fine we don't, we don't care no i trust me with the weird name i have people mispronounce my name so frequently i get i get Star starler is my favorite stella scarlet i got charles once i don't even know how that's that. an alive name wasn't it charles no i get i get mostly what i get is for game of thrones fans your phone will usually autocorrect starla to starks so almost every email i receive is high starks high starks and I think that that's an autocorrect issue. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Any new comments? Any new questions? It doesn't look like it. All right, Anthony, do you have any last minute um, bits and pieces that you would like to give to the alphas about where they can find you? Maybe uh, any overviews, anything that you want to shout out while we have you on here? Yeah, look, I, I'd say uh, a couple of things. You know, if you need to reach out to me for anything, there, there's that feedback button there. By all means, click on it, give me a message. Um, for people that are considering using uh, eRank Pro, you're more than welcome to, to try it out. Uh, I don't offer free trials, but you can get in there. You can sign up today. You can use it for two days and go, mm, I'm going to cancel. Uh, I don't mind. You know, it, it, it's there for you when you want to use it. Uh, if you want to try it for a month, and then but a rest that's a okay by me. Um, I'm really uh, just happy as you need it uh, or get that ring .com. That's the domain name for now. That'll change in a couple of weeks and I'll let you know, Starla. Um, oh, one other thing. Um, we just updated the keyword data for Etsy in January. So if you're using the keyword tool or the uh, keyword explorer, you can now see uh, what was popular on Etsy in January as well. So that's uh, based oh, cool. on what real buyers are actually searching for on Etsy. So that's the other update. Awesome. And hey, Vanessa, I don't I don't know if we've got a source for this, but Vanessa said it's against the rules to change a listing to something completely different. So that might be that might be something to yeah. take note of, guys. That was kind of the assumption. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So if it feels dirty, it is. Right. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong. Don't be sketchy, you know. 
yeah, definitely don't be sketchy. All right, guys. I hope you guys have an awesome week and that you have an even better weekend. Anthony, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And I'm sure that you'll be back. I mean, this is what, your your third Q&A? Oh, did we lose Anthony? Nope, there he is. Just leave him off screen. He yeah. breaks off every time. Yeah, we, we can see him, but you guys can't for some reason. All right, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and hop off here before we lose our connection. Anthony, go ahead and stay on the line so we don't lose you after we go off. Okay. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye. Thank you.